Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. Another all-English video today. I am going to talk about one of my heroes, and I hope to do so respectfully but honestly. Yet, the main topic today is not her, but a short-lived TV show that she last worked on. A show seen as a beacon of hope, but instead crashed and burned. It's no surprise that no one remembers it today. Let's take a trip back. In the early 1980s, the era of detente, meaning the easing of strained relations between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, was over. Cold War tensions had reached a new peak. The world feared that a nuclear apocalypse could come at any time, wiping out civilization and all life as we know it. Popular culture reflected these fears, from the song I Melt With You by Modern English to the TV movie The Day After by the American television network ABC. Enter 11-year-old Samantha Smith, an American girl from the small town of Manchester, Maine. Not that Manchester, those are Brits. Okay, that one. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, Sam. She played softball, she rode a bike, she loved dogs, and she wanted to be a vet. But her life changed with one question. In her book, Journey to the Soviet Union, Samantha wrote, Actually, the whole thing started when I asked my mother if there is going to be a war. Her mother, Jane, showed her a copy of Time from November 22, 1982. Sam reacted, If everyone is so afraid of him, why don't they ask him if he is going to start a war? Jane suggested, why don't you write to him? So Sam wrote that fateful letter, asking the new Soviet leader, are you going to vote to have a war or not? If you aren't, please tell me how you are going to help to not have a war. Five months later, in April of 1983, her letter was published in the Soviet newspaper Pravda, along with other similar letters by other Americans. But Samantha did not get a response. So she did something gutsy. She asked for what? And the reply, from a leader of a superpower, no less, she got. The last paragraph summarized his reply and contained an invitation. I invite you, if your parents will let you, to come to our country, the best time being this summer. You will find out about our country, meet with your contemporaries, visit an international children's camp, Artec, on the sea, and see for yourself. In the Soviet Union, everyone is for peace and friendship among peoples. Sam and her family took up the Soviet leader's offer. For two weeks in July 1983, they toured the Soviet Union. Then, two years later, on August 25, 1985, Sam and her father Arthur died in a plane crash. That's how much everyone knows about Sam. Famous in 83, died in 85. Most people talk about her as America's youngest ambassador, America's littlest diplomat, the goodwill ambassador. The fact is, I'm not most people. Let's talk about those two years. Samantha went to Japan with her mom for the Children's International Symposium in Kobe, where she suggested an international granddaughter's exchange. She wrote a book with her dad about her trip to the Soviet Union. She interviewed several candidates for the 1984 United States presidential elections in a Disney Channel special called Samantha Smith Goes to Washington Campaign 84. Wait a minute. The Disney Channel launched in April 1983. So this special from 1984 may have been one of the first Disney Channel movies. Does this make Sam the first Disney Channel princess? <sighs> she grew tired of being a journalist. Instead, she thought of becoming an actress. She appeared in an episode of Charles in Charge before landing a lead role in Lime Street, the show that we will be talking about today. Whew, finally! But Lime Street was not only Samantha's story. It is also the story of this person. Meet Robert Wagner, who spent the last decade and a half doing the same thing, a detective uncovering the truth behind the crime every week. In 1985, he was out of TV screens since ABC cancelled Heart to Heart the previous year. Wagner said, I had to regroup my emotional psyche to get going again after that. I was rather knocked back when they took Heart to Heart off the air. All of our intentions were to go ahead. It was an abrupt change after five years on the air when I got the phone call saying we wouldn't be back. On ABC's 8485 schedule, we felt we had a couple more years left with it. But Lime Street would be his comeback and would be ABC's way of making amends. Lime Street was created by Harry Thomason and Linda Bloodworth Thomason. 
they would see greater success later with designing women, hearts of fire, and evening shade. But hey, they had to start somewhere. The Thomasons also produced Lime Street together with Wagner, who played the role of J.G. Culver, an insurance investigator. Still an investigator, but at least for an insurance firm this time, the title of the show, Lime Street, refers to Lime Street in London, where Lloyd's of London is based. Lloyd's of London literally invented the insurance industry and would be interesting to talk about at a different time. Lloyd's of London was also Lime Street's original title before the firm declined to allow the use of its name. Like Heart to Heart, Wagner's Culver also has a teammate. Unlike Heart to Heart, Culver's teammate is a British chap named Edward Wingate, played by John Standing. Their boss was portrayed by Patrick McNee, known for his role as John Steed in the British TV show The Avengers. I said British, not American. There we go. Co-executive producer Harry Thomason said, For one thing, only 60% of any show will be taken up with the caper of the week. The other 40% will be about his personal relationships with his children, his father, and other people. A news report reads, Wagner plays a divorced father whose ex-wife lives in Washington. He lives on a horse farm somewhere west of Middleburg with their two daughters. My ex-wife and I decided it was better for the kids. And his father, played by the redoubtable Lou Ayres. According to Harry Thomason, the time was right for a single father show. Well, Wagner was a father in real life at this point in time too. So, Lime Street finally gave him the chance to play one on TV. But, Wagner made it clear that there would be no coping with the pressures of single parenthood lectures. I don't want to suggest anything like that because that's not what the show is about. It's going to have absolutely no messages. Picked to play Culver's younger daughter was Maya Bruton. Playing Margaret Ann was her second acting gig after a short appearance in Back to the Future. The elder daughter was called Elizabeth. Guess who got that part? Go on, take a guess. How Sam ended up on the show depends on who you ask. But the stories involve someone seeing Sam somewhere, someone seeing Sam somewhere. Try saying that five times. Someone seeing Sam somewhere, someone seeing Sam somewhere, someone seeing Sam somewhere, someone seeing Sam somewhere, someone seeing Sam somewhere. Okay, where were we? Oh, right. But the stories involve someone seeing Sam somewhere, and then inviting her to audition for the role. I compare the stories on my blog post, which I will link to below. The rest of the main cast included Julie Fulton and Anne Haney. I'm not sure what their roles were, because most of the show is lost media. Only one episode, The Mystery of Light 401, is available in full online. Now let's talk about why this show failed. Lime Street tanked because, well, the reason depends on who you ask. First reason. People who were involved behind the scenes and who have seen the show praised Sam and her performance. Creator and producer Linda Bloodworth Thomason was quoted as saying that Samantha's reading before 20 of ABC's Top Brass, a difficult scene in which she discusses her first period, was flawless. She never missed a line and was never nervous. The head of casting said she was magnificent. Another Margaret O'Brien, a total natural. After Sam's death, Linda Bloodworth Thomason said that while she had her doubts when Wagner asked Samantha to audition for the role, she, quote, immediately fell in love with her, bracket, upon speaking to her, close bracket. She told me that her dog had just had puppies and she didn't know if she would come out. That was exactly what we wanted, that kind of quality. John Leonard of the magazine New York wrote, Samantha was wonderful, gawky but sincere, life-loving, a saint with bangs. But Sam's character could have been replaced. The plan was to create another character, another daughter with a different name. But this plan soon bit the dust. A GQ article from March 1986 states, A miserable debate blew up over whether or not to replace Samantha. Wagner was adamant. You don't replace people, he told network executives. A second reason for the show's failure may be that Lime Street offered nothing new. Bill Kelly of the Sun Sentinel wrote, Apart from the fact that the pilot devotes a large volume of boring time to depicting Wagner's J.G. Culver character as a doting father, there is virtually nothing to separate Lime Street from such Wagner series as It Takes a Thief, Switch, or Heart to Heart. 
he is still a devilish rascal with a sly grin and a firm moral code. The series pins its hope squarely on the TV audience's fondness for the Wagner they have come to know over the years rather than on plot turns or originality. In fact, the only new thing Lime Street offered disappeared after Samantha died. Douglas Snaufer on The Show Must Go On wrote that Lime Street began to center increasingly on the investigations and less on the family aspects of the show. It didn't help that Lime Street got a bad time slot. ABC was sure it would help Saturday Night at 9, where the love boat had sprung a serious leak last spring. By the end of the 1985 season, boat shows had been cancelled. The Golden Girls on NBC pummeled Lime Street in the ratings game. But there was an easy solution. Change the time slot. Which brings us to the fourth reason. Mark Goodman, for the March 1986 issue of GQ, wrote, Late in the fall, ABC was taken over by Capital Cities Communications and Brandon Stoddard replaced Lou Ehrlich as entertainment president. Wagner was optimistic since he was indeed much closer to Stoddard than to Ehrlich, the man who had yanked heart-to-heart off the air. Yet, there is an article of faith in Hollywood among network presidents. Thou shall not pursue thy predecessor's troubles. Stoddard had some misgivings about the show and didn't feel he could offer Wagner a plummy time slot. Still, out of respect for Wagner's performances, he left the final decision up to R.J. Wagner, who, shrewd enough to know when to fold his cards, did so. As Wagner sums it up, it would be like playing out of town over and over again. I hope we realize one important lesson from all of this. Canceling Heart to Heart was a mistake. Boneheads! Why is that show still on the air anyway? Or, you know, maybe the writing in Lime Street is just not good. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more.